All right, yes sir, big dog. Appreciate you for tapping in with me for this video. So today I just wanted to share what I go through as far as a day in the life for a cybersecurity analyst in my position. So you can see the behind the scenes. I wish somebody would have did this for me before I started. Um, just so like if you're chasing this certification and you want to get this position, this video is going to show you the end result after you get the certification when you're actually working in the field. I'll walk you through some examples um, of tasks that I have to do as far as managing vulnerabilities and then trying to remediate those vulnerabilities and trying to struggle and figure all of that out as well as just go over the daily routine stuff, all of the mundane stuff that a lot of people don't talk about. It's not just glitz and glamour and you're just hacking stuff all day. But what I can say is that it definitely puts you into the trenches and helps you develop good cybersecurity habits that you're gonna need in the future. So let's go ahead and get started with this video. So my day usually starts with just really scheduling and attending a lot of meetings just a lot of game planning and this is usually around from like 8 a.m to about 10 a.m you would go through something like this where you're just linking up with teammates you're strategizing on projects maybe that you're collaborating with somebody on or you might not be collaborating you might be needing help on some of your projects and there's just many meetings just a lot of meetings going on in the morning for you to get all of the work that you need to do because you're going to have a lot of projects that you're going to have to do and these projects can involve anything like managing vulnerabilities right because there's going to be a lot of false positives there's going to be a lot of false negatives just a lot of alerts to go through there's really nothing technical about this position um it's really just more about just having a broad knowledge of cybersecurity best cybersecurity practices and i guess that's what i learned is that these best cybersecurity practices are very detailed so this position is really just letting you know how secure uh, these customers need to be because and how real these cyber threats are because these practices go in extreme detail where you need this many meetings to get things accomplished all right, so unfortunately I can't really show you my vulnerability scanner that I use at work, but you can go to Try Hack Me. This is a free room called Open VAS. Um, and this is a vulnerability scanner that you can use and I can just walk you through here. Basically, once you get in, logged in, you're gonna have to set up the login and everything and get connected to the web interface, but it walks you through there with all the instructions. I literally, I set up vulnerabilities just like this um, and run scans against devices and this room allows you to do just that. Also, if you wanna work with endpoint detection response, Wazoo, this is another good room. I use Sentinel-1 currently in my position, but this one right here, this is uh, just as, it's just as good. I have to go through the room, but it's definitely um, just reading a little bit about it. It's definitely a great resource to learn EDR. Okay, up next, let's take a look at an example of a vulnerability that you might come across in your vulnerability scanner when you work in a SOC or if you're managing vulnerabilities. These are two examples. These are just what you'll see. It's just basically telling you, hey, this is this device is vulnerable and you need to remediate it, whether it's default uh, passwords, but it's your job. That's where you need to log into these devices and you're gonna have to remediate whatever vulnerability it is. Um, for example, I had one where it was FTP server was vulnerable and it was using default passwords and credentials. And I noticed that I didn't even know this, but anonymous was a default username. So I was like um, today years old or whatever when I found that out and it was just like more real world stuff. So it started to become more real because I was like, oh, OK, that's why anonymous uses their name, whatever, whatever. But anyways, but as you can see here, I'm just struggling. I can't remediate the thing. I'm trying all these different I'm Googling, I'm chat GPT and trying to remediate uh, the vulnerability that was with this device. I really can't go into detail of what the vulnerability is. But what I can say is if you're comfortable working in the command line and you know how to work with different systems, know how to interact with these systems, it's definitely gonna benefit you in this type of position. 
all right so that was all of the hands-on stuff so now just slowing it back down it's probably midday around this time and this is where i'm just gonna be you know just taking that lunch break you know getting that protein smoothie all of that stuff in there uh today it was you know what i'm saying a little bit of chicken alfredo a little bit of pizza i meant that uh breadsticks that good good pizza hut you know be swinging all right so after lunch so working in cybersecurity, although i'm not a pen tester um, I still see pen testing reports and all of this stuff. I see the tools that they use. They, they do use these same tools that are used in Kali Linux and I'm able to go through the pen testing report. So when I do have downtime, I definitely um, try to work on these pen testing skills. Um, just trying to look for exploits or trying to find or using vulnerable machines uh, as virtual machines and then just trying to find exploits and exploiting them also working on definitely coding and working on programming just basic skills just exercises again when you do have downtime working with apis with postman just all the technology and this is not a structured study session right because you're definitely you're probably researching for something at work trying to see if you can get a code to work to help automate maybe something that you're managing vulnerabilities or some kind of script to ping certain IPs. And after that, it's back to probably more meetings. Uh, no, this is definitely not my team. You already know, but this is like the, you know, like the Walgreens photo, but the video style. And then back to just managing the dashboards and alerts, getting all of that organized, making sure there's nothing hot on the board for my team and everything. And then back to all my to-do lists. And really at the end of the day is really just prepping for tomorrow and just wrapping up any loose ends, any kind of tasks that I maybe wasn't able to get to or maybe I couldn't figure out or I had to follow up with somebody on and I had got some new information from them. All right, big dog, that's a wrap for this one. So just remember that cybersecurity is just a constant learning game. So if you're interested in this field, make sure that you're going to keep learning, stay curious and never stop growing. Make sure not to forget to turn on them notification bells and like this video if you liked it, um, because next week I will be dropping the video on the first step that you should take if you want to become an ethical hacker, if you want to learn ethical hacking or if you just want to break into this cybersecurity field. I'll holla at you on that video. Peace.